All right, so we have 20 minutes, four panelists, and 70 questions. So Perfect. you're going to, this is basically Twitter. You're going to just limit your answers to 144 characters. 70. <laughs> That's not entirely true. Um, so uh, I want to start out with a, with a curveball question. Um, just in terms of social media and B2B, uh, so LinkedIn is the obvious answer in terms of how to target businesses and, and making sure that your content is relative, uh, relevant for, for businesses. Uh, wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about how to be relevant uh, for a B2B audience uh, on platforms like Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, and what, what role some of those other platforms has uh, for B2B social. I manage the YouTube network and the SlideShare network for CDW, now right on Vernon Hills and also office in Chicago. And on those areas, what I say with both, what, what I've found, is that you have to really be thinking about your customers and what they want. And I don't mean that as a gimmick. I mean ask them. Pay attention to them. See what feedback you get. And don't treat these areas as a dumping ground. Actually pay attention to your metrics and find out what is really working? And forget the view stuff, because somebody can look at something and then leave within a couple seconds. You need to go deeper. Look at who your subscribers are. Look at what people get high likes and dislikes. Look at what uh, basically people want to talk about and ask you questions for. So really, treat this as customer care. And that's the biggest thing where B2Bs can really excel in social media. What are some of the risks of uh, B2B being on social platforms uh, in terms of dealing with negativity and, and customer service issues and how do you how do you mitigate some of those some of those risks of playing in those open channels where anybody can say what they want you hunt them down and kill them one by one <laughs> you do not rest until the last one begs for mercy okay seriously <laughs> woke you guys up uh, my experience is, you first you validate, does somebody have a gripe? Because at CDO or other companies that I've been with, it's if, if an order doesn't come out on time. Now, people have a right to complain. If people, this is a problem with B2B, but it's with a problem with a lot of companies in social media. They just treat it as a broadcast tool. They treat it as just PR, and they're not around for the conversation. They're not around to help people. And to me, a lot of people say social media is a promise. I'm sorry, a party. I say it's a promise, and it's an expectation that you're going to be there. So you have to look at it as, are you setting expectations that you're not following through on? And is that something that you can turn somebody who's a critic into an evangelist? Somebody who just wants to feel like you're listening to them? Because this is an emotionally charged time if somebody gives a crap enough to talk about they're pissed. Take that as an opportunity versus somebody who is a troll and is just going out there to be negative for the sake of being negative. So you have to qualify that first. And you always have to think about it. Don't just apologize. Offer how can you make it better and follow up. That will make some of your best critics into evangelists. There's a lot of focus of jumping on the next thing and, and making sure you're on every platform, uh, every opportunity out there. And in a lot of cases for B2C companies, it makes sense. Experiment, jump at it, put your brand out wherever anybody might be talking about you or wherever there's an opportunity. Uh, on the flip side, especially when you're talking about a B2B audience, what are some examples of platforms or sometimes where a, a brand is maybe stretching a little bit too much to be relevant on a, on a platform? Well, when we started doing our program on Grindr, I can say with a sales shot, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, perverts. All right. Actually, I would say on Pinterest, it has worked very well for CDW. We clearly target our audience. We did a Pinterest contest, and it has worked for other B2Bs. But you need a very clear strategy and idea of who your audience is. What are they pinning? In this case, we were pinning tech products they love. And one was for a high-end IT person. One was for a marketer. One was for somebody who basically has control of the budget. And one was just for people that are getting new to tech, since CDW deals with basically the theme is tech, tech we love. And you can be dealing with those who are the nerds to those who are the geeks. And so it was a very clear understand who the audience is. Just like on SlideShare, that is the sleeping giant. It's B2B visual storytelling. I even have my own SlideShare channel. I've gotten 40,000 views and the ability to track leads through forums. So I always say is that who might be in your space and see what they're doing. Instagram, you can do 15 second clips of your YouTube video, even with Vine. It just means the unboxing works very well, that if you are a B2B. So I say anything is possible, as long as you really think about it, is that's where your audience is, and then it's time to get creative. As an agency, one of the things we struggle with, uh, as we're talking about social platforms and likes and retweets and engagement, is tying all of that to real business goals and, and metrics and uh, money at the end of the day, which is what uh, companies are looking for when they're engaging in any sort of marketing, whether it's uh, social or, or paid media. 
Um, what are some of the ways or potentially creative ways that you've tied in you know, success in social media, which oftentimes uh, the CMO will love it, but not necessarily the CFO? So what you've said is about how do you appeal really to different groups that different metrics matter. To a CMO, they're going to be looking at things like views. To a CFO, they're going to be looking at things like sales or they're at least a lower rate of returns or customer satisfaction or you know, better, uh, you know, better branding and you know, surveys that you do. What I always try to show, like with YouTube, the answer is subscriptions because YouTube's algorithm is time watched. And subscri subscribers are shown to have two to three times more time watch, which increases your SEO in YouTube and Google. So that's a term called causality. It says that if we do this, we will be most likely to reach our end goal that appeals to the CFO. Now the problem is that when you deal with numbers, is that you get lower numbers by staying away from things like views, which can be paid, and then you try to explain the value of having something like a subscriber and saying a subscriber is much more likely to be a customer. So you have to show causality and saying if we get this and tiny things like SEO, word of mouth marketing, and say because if we meet this social metric, that's much closer to business outcome than stuff that might be high numbers. Because what you describe is it's a mile wide and an inch deep. You need to meet them halfway and then you show you have a true metrics program that says, see, we are now able to prove it and we're now able to pivot if it doesn't meet our needs. And I think yeah. we will uh, end there. We're out of time. Thanks again for Adam, Grant, Emily, and Colleen.